nationalism in India. The Britishers came to India as traders in spice. They also traded silk, cotton, indigo, dye, etc. They received the royal order to establish factories in India. Later, Mahatma Gandhi led many struggle to fight against the British. The idea of Satyagraha. Mahatma Gandhi returned from Africa in 1915 after a successful struggle against the party. He introduced the idea of Satyagraha in India. Satyagraha was a novel way of mass agitation. Satyagraha emphasized the power of truth and the need to search for it. He conducted Satyagraha in many parts of the country, such as Champaran in Bihar, Kheda district in Gujarat, and Ahmedabad in Gujarat. The Rowlett Act The Rowlett Act was passed by Sidney Rowlett in 1919. It was hurriedly passed through the Imperial Legislative Council despite the opposition of the Indian members. It gave the government enormous power to repress the political activities. Mahatma Gandhi conducted Hartal on 6th April 1919 against this Black Act. Rallies were organized, workers went on strikes and shops were closed down. Mahatma Gandhi was spared from entering Delhi anymore. On 10th April, the police in Amritsar fired on a peaceful procession. Martial law was imposed, which stated that not more than two people could form a group or conduct meetings. General Dyer took command. The Jallianwala Bhag Massacre On 13th April, the infamous Jallianwala Bhag Massacre took place. A large crowd gathered in the enclosed ground of Jallianwala Bhag. Some came to protest, whereas others came to take part in the Baisakhi Fair. General Dyer entered the ground, blocked the exits and fired upon them. As the news of Jallianwala Bhag spread, people started to conduct many strikes. Many people were flocked and villages were bought. Finally, seeing this violence, Mahatma Gandhi called off the movement. The Non-Cooperation Movement of 1921 Why Non-Cooperation? The basis of starting a non-cooperation movement was that Mahatma Gandhi believed that the British rule established in India only because of the cooperation of Indians. So, Gandhiji believed that if the Indian refused the cooperation, then the British Empire will collapse in a year. The three stages of the movement The surrender of titles avoided by the British government, the boycott of civil services, foreign goods, army, police, etc. and the civil disobedience campaign. The Participants of the Movement The movement in town started with the middle class people who boycotted the British institutions and left the government controlled schools and colleges. The movement in countryside was that of the peasants and tribes. They were helped by Baba Ramchandra, an indentured labourer from Fiji. The Awad peasant movement was against the oppressive landlords and Talukdas who forced the poor peasants to do begar in their lands. The movement in Godam Hills of Andhra Pradesh. Godam Hills was a colonial forest region. The tribals in this region were forced to do begar and the people were not allowed to enter the forest. The leader who led them was Aluri Sitaram Raju. With his help, the people used to do guerrilla warfare. They defied the authorities. Swaraj in plantations. Under the Inland Immigration Act of 1859, the plantation workers were not allowed to leave the tea gardens without permissions. In fact, they were rarely given such permissions. When they heard of the non-cooperation movement, many defied the authorities, left the plantations and headed home. But on the way back, they were blocked by railway and steamer strike and caught by the Britishers and brutally beaten up. The End of the Non-Cooperation Movement the reason why Mahatma Gandhi called of the non-cooperation movement was mainly because of the Chauri Chaura incident. In February 1922, Mahatma Gandhi decided to withdraw the non-cooperation movement as it was felt that the movement was turning violent and Satyagrahi stated to be trained properly. In such a situation of internal death, the two factors that shaped the Indian politics towards the late 1920s, the first one was the effect of worldwide economic depression and the second one was the appointment of Simon Commission under Sir John Simon. In December 1929, under the presidency of Jawaharlal Nehru, the Lahore session of Congress demanded Purna Swaraj. It was also declared that 26 January 1930 would be celebrated as Independence Day. According to Gandhiji, Saul Law was one of the most impressive phases of British rule. So, Mahatma Gandhi started his famous Salt March with 78 volunteers from Sabarmati Ashram to Dandi coast of Gujarat. 
thousands in different parts of the country violated the salt law. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, also known as Frontier Gandhi, was also arrested. In such a situation of violence, he decided to call off the movement and entered into a pact on 5th March 1931 called the Gandhi Irwin Pact. According to this pact, Gandhiji agreed to participate in the Second Round Table Conference and the government agreed to release the political prisoners, but he returned disappointed. Swaraj meant different to different social groups who joined the movement. The industrial working class did not participate in the civil disobedience movement in large number except in Nagpur region. The rich place in communities like Patidars of Gujarat and Jats of UP were in strong supporters of the civil disobedience movement. The poor peasantry found it difficult to pay their rents to landlords, so they joined a variety of radical movements led by the socialists and communists in hope that they would not have to pay the rent any further. Another important feature of this movement was the large-scale participation of women. The two groups that did not participate in the movement were Dalits and Muslim communities. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar organized the Dalits into the press class associations. The Muslim political organization did not participate in the civil disobedience movement as they fell separated from the Congress after the decline of non-cooperation and Khilafat movement. Hence, the civil disobedience movement started in an atmosphere of distrust and suspicion between the two communities. Conclusion Finally, in 1947, India got independence from British along with the partition of the nation into India and Pakistan. Though a lot of factors had led to the rising of nationalism in India, the major role was played by the First World War, Rowlett Act and Jallianwala Bagh Massacre. These major incidences have had a deep down impact on the mind of Indians. These motivated them to fight against Britishers with a strong feeling of nationalism. This feeling of nationalism was the main driving force for the independent struggle in India.